once again, we are going through the Constitution line by line. We're in the Sixth Amendment. We're in the sixth part of the Sixth Amendment. I'm Don Frazier. I'm Paul Fabrizio. And we are I was gonna... just thinking about all those sixes in there. Yeah, that's it. 666. Six, six. Um, I hate that. That's a strange nexus, especially given the topic of this part. I know. What's the part? Okay, we're talking about the rights of the accused. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. In all criminal prosecutions, the accused shall enjoy the right to the assistance, have the assistance of counsel for his defense. You have a right to an attorney, Don. But but it doesn't say anything about him being free. No. It just says I get one. Yeah. Well, what do you mean free? Well, I mean, you often see the cases where they're given a pro bono attorney, you know? Right. <laughs> because attorneys have to take their turn in the barrel. Okay, so what we got, again, the framers set out the principle. You have a right to an attorney. Yeah. You, know, the you government, have a God-given right or right. constitution-given given right. right. The, the government Spaghetti has, monster-given there right. There you go. Yeah. The government has all its resources and you all alone, so you get help. And then, of course, that led to the next question, what if you can't afford help? Correct. And the government, and this go back to the Miranda rule, you know, you have a right to remain silent, you have a right to an attorney. If you can't afford an attorney, an attorney will be appointed for you. Correct. And so jurisdictions, state jurisdictions, the federal government, all have public defenders. And if they aren't on salary or on provided by the county directly, they will get the local bar, the local attorneys, and they will participate in one way or another. Provide a pool. They will provide a pool where lawyers will be selected. So you always have the right to a counsel. That's nice. It's not just you facing the big bad wolf. Exactly. And uh, that leads into the next question, which I thought you were going to spring up. You brought up free. I would argue the deeper question is, do you have a right to a good attorney? Yeah, well, but then definition of good, please. What is it? Yeah, I guess one that wins. <laughs> Do you have a right to a competent attorney? Well, you can certainly argue, I think, in the course of your trial that your attorney is incompetent, but then mm -hmm. it's up to the judge to decide if you're right or wrong, doesn't yeah. it? What is a competent attorney? Well, I guess one that's asleep during the trial. That might be... Well, you, well. You, you bring up a case that I believe went to the Supreme Court. Dun, dun, dun. Are you ready for this? I'm ready for it's it. It's one of my favorite things uh, in a sick, horrible way. <laughs> you political scientists have some bizarre interest. <laughs> this defendant in a capital case, yeah, murder. Big deal. Facing the death penalty, had an attorney, and he fell in love with her. And she fell in love with him. Wow, okay. that sounds like That's, something you'd watch at about 4 o'clock in the afternoon this on the, one of the middle channels. Yeah, this <laughs> is not something good in any sort of way. And they spent an awful lot of time together, so much time together outside of the trial that she fell asleep during the trial. He was convicted, sentenced to death. His appeal, number one, fire the attorney. Yeah. Number two was my attorney was incompetent. And because she was incompetent, and she was incompetent because she was sleeping, I was denied my Sixth Amendment rights. Wow. And the Supreme Court said, sorry, you had an attorney. All you're guaranteed is an attorney. It doesn't say you have to have a good one. <laughs> doesn't say you have to have a good or an awake one. Or an awake one. Now, there has been other cases where attorneys that have slept – um, basically, you began the whole process over again. Yeah, if they, I mean, the judge just says, just "I'm not like, even gonna." Yeah, this, this will trip us up if we don't handle it. Yeah, so. so, but there is that idea that you were guaranteed an attorney, and that's it. That's all. Doesn't have to be a good one. <laughs> okay. And by the way, do they define what a counsel is? Could be a comfort dog, <laughs> yeah. or a comfort peacock. And, and the reality is, each of us has the right. To defend ourselves. Sure. And, you know, the old saying, if, you know, the client, what is it about? You're a fool if you defend yourself. And that, there's a or saying. if you defend yourself, you have a fool, fool for, for a client. client. Yeah. yeah, that's it. And so that's always a dangerous thing to do. But you have that right to do it. So have counsel or not. Yeah. Uh, 
<laughs> Interesting. I'm just sitting here thinking about all this going, I hope this never comes up where yeah. I have to know this stuff like this. Right. That, exactly. That's grim. Yeah. I mean, the framers thought tragically they provided all these things to help the defendant. But still, the defendant has so much responsibility on themselves yeah. to make sure that this all comes to tr- fruition. Remarkable. So that's our line. That's our line. And that's the end of the Sixth Amendment. Yes. Next time we'll be talking about the Seventh Amendment, which has to do with, tease it out. Uh, the Seventh Amendment is is really about civil cases. Don't get excited, everybody. Okay. Yeah. It's the Eighth Amendment that'll be fun. So the Seventh Amendment is on the way to the Eighth Amendment. There you All go. All right. So we'll see you next time with the Seventh Amendment. Thanks.